what is the problem? The problem is that most of our collections are just designed and imagined to be read just on this like one artifact at a time. That is basically the problem we confront. That is the motivation behind getting this grant for DILO. That is the motivation for, for librarians now talking across, the, across many different disciplines about uh, collections as data. It's uh, if you look up collections as data, you will notice there is a, a very large discourse in the profession of library science around these problems. Because for 30 years, since uh, well, like 30, 40 years, since we started digitizing our collections, since with the advent of the internet, we share, started sharing them online, um, uh, where we saw the rise of database vendors and the, the sort of increased dominance over the academic market of companies like ProQuest and EBSCO, et cetera, uh, who are uh, undoubtedly building the same kind of architectures. Um, what we saw was that we only imagine the same operations over and over, browse, search, and experience the cultural artifact one by one. Uh, we never built a world where we could do these kinds of operations that people like me in digital humanities like to do. Uh, and operations that we know have value that allow us to see um, uh, certain things that, that we would otherwise uh, miss. So that is the big problem. And that is, of course, uh, we are in the middle of addressing that problem, uh, trying to imagine how we can open up our collections. And Delux specifically is trying to, to think very deeply through how it opens up their large collection. As Delux is an example, it's a very rare example of a, of a comprehensive regional library that was able to build a partnership with many different institutions while allowing each institution to more or less negotiate their own relationship to property and rights and ethics, which is rare because either we, you have these large re, uh, regionals like Europeana that actually just uh, explicitly homogenize everything that they touch but DLOC allow for a certain kind of diversity uh, to, to exist within it while encouraging an inclusivity that is uh, unheard of. Now, uh, as such, the value of the collection is immense, uh, both at the level of the normal level that, that people are used to of experiencing each of the items one by one, but also for us who like to do computational operations. Uh, to be able to uh, to see patterns uh, at large, it also has the largest collection of uh, historical newspapers in the in the in the Caribbean, which allows us to do all kinds of moves on the history of the of the region uh, and the culture. In any case, enough praising the log. Uh, uh, so they want to be able to do this, and they're already starting to do this. So let's. Before moving on, let's look at some of the examples of have some of the uh, uh, cultural institutions that are not Google are, are, are doing this. Um, and, and also it's important to point out that Google, for example, they only do this internally. They allow you this tool for you to play around with their collection, but they do not share their data. It's not like, here, let me give you all the Google books. Yeah. The closest thing we have to somebody sharing their data uh, and, allowing, and allowing these moves that is at the scale of Google is Hathi Trust. So let's start there. I mean, I imagine most of you are familiar with Hathi Trust. Uh, for those of you who are coming from the region and may have, perhaps don't use Hathi Trust, um, it's actually, it, it was born more, more or less around the same time as Google was digitizing all the books. And, and it was able actually to get a good chunk of, um, of the books that were being digitized in this process. Uh, and complicated history, but now Hathi Trust uh, it still remains on the side of, non on side of nonprofit, uh, of a nonprofit digital collection of books that we associate with research libraries. Now, they have a, let me share my screen. They have, Uh, let me start closing my uh, let me start closing my chat app so that they have 
pop, 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 pop. This is Hathi Trust, the normal, uh, you can go to Hathi Trust to experience the browse, search, find an item at hathitrust.org. This is where you would uh, encounter their database as we call them, right? But they also have the Hathi Trust Research Center. Now, if you Google Hathi Trust Research Center, you can find it. It's also, we know it also, also as the HTRC, and uh, that's the shorthand for, for it. Now, they are an example uh, of a really large collection that allows you access to their data. And they have different forms of access to their data where you can perform these operations. One of them is that they actually allow you, sub, for some parts of their, uh, of their collection, they actually allow you to download it which is amazing. You know, a lot of the times, all we ask in the side of computation is to be able to just download a zip file with everything, with all of your images, with all of your metadata. Um, <coughs> so for example, uh, and they have, of course, just like DLOC, a lot of uh, sub collections. So for example, Doc South, which is a collection with a lot of materials on Southern culture, past and present, uh, Southern being the United States, not, uh, not Latin America. They have the Evo collection and the Echo collection, uh, which are important for people who study the 19th century and 17th century in the Anglophone world. Um, and they allow you to download a bunch of this stuff, just raw, just get it all. Um, but they also create they also have a, a lot of the stuff that you cannot actually download because of copyright restrictions. They also have a tools that you can use within an encapsulated environment. So this is, I'm not going, this is not a tutorial on HDRC, but this environment that you see right here, they created. And what they allow you to do is some of these computational moves without actually taking the data away from their servers for copyright reasons. Uh, for legal reasons, you cannot say you cannot take the data. Uh, you are still able to write some code in this interface and perform some of these operations, generate some of those visualizations, for example, that you just saw uh, in Google Ngram, other type of things that Voyant allows you to do. It has the added advantage that you don't even need to know how to code in order to use some of these environments, right? Just like Wyant, all you need to do is, you know, uh, learn how to use the interface, uh, try to understand a little bit of what the statistics uh, is doing for you. And you can start doing some of these forms of analysis and generating some of these visualizations here too. But this kind of, in this kind of model that is becoming more and more common, what you are performing is something called non-consumptive research, which Hathi Trust won the right to do uh, in a very big court case, uh, Google involved and ha uh, versus Google, uh, uh, where they uh, they won the right for us to be able to do these kinds of operations uh, with uh, on this data as long as they as long as the persons who own the data are not sharing. Now the companies are doing the same thing, ProQuest and Gale Cengage and all this kind of thing. They're selling libraries and universities, the ability for you to be able to do these operations within their collections without them ever sharing their collection. So that's good to consider because that gives us two different, a, a way to start thinking about the different forms of access and types of operations that we'll be able to do on this data. Uh, that is uh, probably the dominant two sides of the house and the most useful two sides to talk about. One is where they allow you to download everything. I hope DLOG is moving in this direction. It's also the other side is more expensive. Uh, they allow you to download the, the data and you can do whatever you want with it. And the other one is like, well, you can perform some operations but the data has to stay here. So the operations you'll be able to perform are, are limited. And that's why we see in a, uh, in Hathi Trust, and that's what you will see in some of these other products. Uh, sometimes that's the only choice you have because of the copyright uh, question, uh, especially for 20th century material, a big problem in the Caribbean. Uh, for those of you in the room who are literary scholars, you know, this is a, I'm a 20th century specialist, 
it, this has always been like the bane of our existence is like working within the copyright restrictions uh, in the Caribbean in the 20th century. Um, in any case, um, so uh, actually Perry, uh, it was I right in saying that your goal is actually to try to go to as much as possible in the first model, which is the one where you share the data? Yeah, so right now, hi everyone, I'm, I'm Perry Collins. I'm the um, PI on this DLACAS data project um, and also the copyright liaison to the Digital Library of the Caribbean. Um, yes, so the goal of our initial project right now, which is wrapping up and it's really been a planning pilot project, um, is to make available a portion of our newspapers for bulk download and thinking about what kinds of interfaces do we already have and what kinds of tools might we use to complement that? So I think I um, put a link to our main web presence in the chat and I can add that again, but we've started making some of those titles available for bulk downloads. So you can go in and download all the text um, from the OCR of the newspapers or all of the PDF um, page images. Um, that's still a really early kind of experiment. And like Alex said, I think our goal is to think about how we do that um, in a more systematic kind of way. I think, I don't wanna overpromise. I think it'll be a long time before we're able to do this with a lot and it involves a lot of conversations with partners as well. Um, I think one thing that does help um, depending on the collection is that we, most of our agreements are around non-commercial and educational uses that are already lend themselves to this kind of work. And so it's not that copyright isn't an issue necessarily, but that piece of our existing agreements does sort of open up um, some possibilities for what we might be able to do um, with these materials. And a lot of it is around, um, around our processes and the systems that we have in place as much as anything else. You know, we have all these files. It's really the challenge of just putting them out there for folks to be able to use. And also I think hearing from all of you about what's most of interest and how do we prioritize in this, you know, over 4 million page collection, what do you want access to? Because we're not going to do it all at once. <laughs> 